What's up, everybody? It's your boy Shoei back for episode 15. You know, the last one was a banger. We want to thank uh, Omar and Amer again for coming by. Check out their movie. Um, their new movie's coming out, Jersey. It'll be out soon. They'll uh, give you the details on their IG and stuff. You guys thought we wouldn't have more guests, but, you know, we've been hyping them up for a while. We saved them all for now. And we got another one in the studio today. But first, I want to ask my co-hosts how they're doing, you know? Like, uh, Amul and Vivek are back in the studio again. Yeah, I'm doing good. Yeah, what about you, Vivek? How's the week been? How's, how's February been? I'm alive. That's, <laughs> that's all I can really say. But... Very uh, morbid, but... Uh... <laughs> nah, it is what it is. So, I want to talk to you guys about something, right? You know, like, on IG, you, get, you keep on getting these ads and stuff. Yeah. Right? So, I'm on IG, and... You know how brown people do it, bro. Like, when you go to the bathroom, you got to clean yourself properly. You know what I'm saying? And, um... So I saw this, I saw this new ad and it's for a bidet or is it bidet or whatever it is. It's a bidet. It's a bidet, right? Bidet. And I just thought that was fucking weird as hell, right? Because this is something that I've never searched for, never thought of. And like, I've literally never even walked by that aisle at Home Depot or nothing. Like the plumbing section, none of that stuff. So I was, I was curious. I was like, why the fuck is IG targeting me for something like this, right? And so... Our guest might know something about this. Yeah, I was just gonna <laughs> say, um, I wanted an answer. And so I decided to call our friend. Um, we called our expert in. <laughs> we called our expert in, you know how it be. The mystery of the bidet. Yeah. Yo, because isn't it weird, man? Like, yeah, I've been saying this for like a good like two years at this point. Like, yeah, it's not even something that we talk about. Yeah, but I've noticed it when I talk about it too. Like, we'll we'll be having a conversation. I'll say something and then like, oh, yo, I want to get like a chicken burger. Shows up. And so I decided, you know, let's uh, let's call that expert in. You know, let's talk about some digital marketing today. It's a little bit off topic from what we're used to. We usually talk about entertainment and stuff. But, you know, I know a thing or two about the interwebs. You know the, the HTMLs, uh, the HTMLs, the HTTPS. Yeah, you already know. Um, and so we decided to call Shah Rukh Khan to the studio today. I Not know Shah Rukh Khan, you're thinking. I know we're all hoping we get that Shah Rukh Khan too, but this one will do. This is the one that we know. Welcome to the pod, Shah Rukh. Welcome to the one mic crew. Hey, thanks, um, man. Thanks for having me. And uh, so yeah, let's start this conversation off by why does Instagram? How does Instagram know? that I wash my ass, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, why why does it want me to purchase a bidet or bidet? bidet. But first of all, like before that, your your background is a marketer, right? Like mm -hmm. you've, you've done marketing. And that's how you would know yeah. all about this. So, yeah, no, man. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Yeah, um, no. I've been doing, I've been, I've been, I've been the guy behind those ads, so um you're, you're just telling me that you're the one who's targeting me <laughs> i'm the one that's targeting you guys so uh as a digital marketer we use these facebook google platforms to target um so essentially the reason why you got a bidet ad uh on, on your instagram is not because um google and facebook can read your mind but these companies like facebook and google are your all copies when it comes to data collection and so they uh, they use signals like your ethnicity, what you like and what you don't like. Uh, do target. So you're, you're telling me that Google is racially profiling me? Absolutely, absolutely. I That's don't bullshit, know. man. It's 2020. For fuck's sakes. I don't know if you. For me sooner, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys been seeing some of these ads, but like Telus throws in like Bollywood characters in their ads for like television and things like that. Yeah, to yeah. me, using not even English, it's in Hindi, and so. They can target based on what your preferences are, what Charles, you like, be and what your friends like. Your Hindi ain't that great. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. Trust me. But, like, well, I mean, we use all this data to essentially give you ads that are going to be most related to you. Okay. And so, 
the alternative really is on these platforms, you're gonna get ads nonetheless, right? So the reason why these platforms collect so much of your data and that we use it is so that we give you ads that are actually relevant to you. Okay. Cause other than that, you're probably gonna get ads for like ballet shoes or some shit like that, which really doesn't matter to you. I have, I can safely say I have not received an advertisement for a ballet shoe yet. <laughs> right. I don't yeah. know if you guys have. No, uh, Vivek might have. Vivek took a dance class once. <laughs> once I took one. Did you salsa, actually? I took one salsa class in LA. Uh, Sick. It didn't turn out. I mean, it was alright. It was only an hour. Vivek so. was looking for something else in those dance classes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you gotta find what you want to find a, somehow, right? LA, you gotta go to the he source. Was, he was looking for salsa. <laughs> Y'all know what he was looking for. <laughs> Latino. Latino. Vibes. <laughs> I took, a, I took a hip hop one before. It was, it was fun. I remember yeah. Sharok's dancing days. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, long. yeah, you can dance, Sharok. I don't know. I've been busted out of a move in a long time. So we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, continue. But yeah, that. essentially, that's it, right? Like, um, Facebook, essentially, Facebook controls or has a huge footprint on the interweb besides just their platforms. Right? Hey, like, we're not the only ones using the word interwebs around here. <laughs> um, they have access to through Instagram, through Facebook, through WhatsApp, but also each sort of website has a Facebook piece of code on it. So based on what you visit on their other websites, like Facebook's getting all that data so they can predict what you're wanting to buy, what's most interesting to you mm-hmm. um, before you even know it. So it can take data, like information, like a move maybe goes has a burger every Tuesday at five o'clock. And he doesn't even know that. And I'll show him Facebook yeah, burger so ads. Does this shit know based on my like banking history or does it know based on my location at the place? Everything, as much as, as many signals as it can pick up. So location, tracks where you go, when you go, uh, how often you go. Uh, Google's big on that. Like Google really knows your location data. If you go into really your account, you can see where you've been. Uh, and it pieces all that information together. So it knows where your commute is, where you work without you even having to put in um, that information. Well, he, here's my question. Do they have access? They have, do they have access to your mic? They're never going to tell you and there's no confirmation that they do or they don't. Yeah. But my understanding is that they do. They, oh, they pretty, do. That's pretty creepy. That's fucked up. Yeah. That is creepy. Um, <laughs> so, but my, that, that's my, that's my thought. That's my hypothesis. And for sure, like they have access to your mic if you have a Google Home or Alexa. Yeah. Um, they so would be listening. listening. They would be using those, and they'd be. I mean, there's not someone behind the scenes really like listening to what Amul's saying, and then yeah. whenever he says something, that they tell their boss. I, I could be a dangerous man. You know, so. Yeah. <laughs> but really, it's like picking up using, you know, artificial intelligence to see what what phrases you're saying and stuff like that. Yeah, like I'll you, probably you, figure out what you're into. Yeah, like you start searching stuff on like Google Chrome or something. Or even like Safari doesn't have to be Google Chrome, yeah. right? Like Google knows exactly what you search for. And essentially it knows exactly what you're gonna search for next. Because whatever you search for, a million other people have searched for before. Yeah. And they know what you search for and know what you search for after that. Yeah. I remember there was like a TED talk like three, four years ago. May even be a bit older than that. And there was this guy, he was saying he searched up uh, he was like, I, I'm gonna search up Egypt right now. Mm-hmm. And then he searched up Egypt and he was like, I want you guys in the audience to search up Egypt on your phone. See if your results match mine. And everybody was like, our results don't match at all. Nope. And he nope. was like, that's that's targeting right there. Your internet experience is highly, highly curated. Yeah. Um, just all the way down to like how your feed is all set up, right? Like if you noticed on Instagram, like your stories are not like those little circles on top of the on top of your feed. They're not chronologically. Bro, we, we've all we seen know that. that. We, we, we've right? all seen yeah, that. you probably all know that. Yeah, we've all seen There's that. There's always meme. a particular person Where? or two <laughs> that shows up. And it's like all those business pages are always, always at the end, unless you really engage with them. And now Instagram just launched a new um, functionality on on their app that you can actually see which accounts you engage with the most and which accounts you actually don't engage with. And they're using that data based on it to show you and what not to show you. Why would they give us that information? Honestly, really is just to be more transparent or quote unquote be transparent um, because there's a huge push on direct privacy and people wanting to know what data you have on us and things like that. Um, now that Apple and Facebook and Google allow you to download all that data, it's just a real play to keep everybody calm so that they can continue to sell their um data to, to sell my information to someone. sell your information to us 
to yeah. myself. <laughs> Pretty much. No, nah, that's because I know in like the U.S. there's been a huge push, like politically, to try and uh, be be more transparent with these companies. Like Twitter's been under a lot of pressure. Um, Facebook has been a huge amount of pressure. Like mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have been. Um, for example, Elon Musk tweeted out two days ago. He was yeah. like, you know, delete your Facebook. Delete your Facebook app. And a lot of people are like, yeah, like there's no reason to have Facebook anymore. And mm -hmm. obviously, no, like, Facebook for old people anyway. Yo, so. yeah. that's that's like that's the thing with Facebook's advantage though, right? Like with all Cambridge Analytica, everybody deleted Facebook, but they kept Instagram. Yeah, Facebook owns both. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so like, it's just another app, right? Like, uh, people don't know that there's they're connected. So your audiences still need a lot more. Yeah. And education. The amount of people that's still using WhatsApp. Exactly and right. On WhatsApp, like Huge in the form. All those Android form. users. They can yeah. shame they can still on you. Read those, uh, read those messages and everything, right? I mean, like the founders of WhatsApp left, right? Because yeah. they didn't see eye to eye with Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, because I mean, like originally WhatsApp was supposed to be like, uh, like end-to-end -end encryption sort of thing. Like that was their goal mm -hmm. of having it like completely safe and private. But yeah. now it's like that's completely gone. Like, I mean, it still isn't encrypted, but. Like they're eventually going to be deploying ads on on WhatsApp. They tried testing it, but now they're not. But like they're going to bring it back anyways. Wherever they can deploy ads, yeah, they're going to try to do that. But I remember, I uh, mean, like like Instagram nowadays. Like I'm, I'm sure everybody's noticed, but like if you try scrolling through your newsfeed, try going like try seeing like six stories in a row or six posts in a row without seeing an ad. You no, won't. I think it's like five or six. Every five or six, it's gonna yeah, be. And they, and they found that out. This sweet spot, probably they tested that the hell out of that to see what that sweet spot is. But yeah, same with like I mean your your IG stories, you're opening up or no nah, IG stories, Snapchat, like all of them. It's like you you see one story, the next one's gonna be an advertisement. Mm -hmm. is, if not one, then two or three. Yeah, I right. mean, think about it, right? Like these apps are all free, right? Like you're not yeah. paying to use Snapchat or Instagram or TikTok and things like that. Yeah. It comes at a cost, right? And so, like, people are still going to continue to so use them. So you in the digital marketing world, right? As, like, obviously you're not, like, and this is not, like, a shot at you or nothing, but yeah. you're, you're still, like, young in this field. Yeah. Right? Um, I remember listening to an interview uh, with, the, with, the C, with the former CEO or, or the CEO of uh, Instagram. And, um, mm -hmm. and he said... left, too. I, I think the, the I think this one was actually like um, the current CEO. So he said that this is like Instagram and like social media is not something that's going to become a private like subscription based service, even though that's where like the rest of the world is going. Mm -hmm. You have a little bit of insight into the industry itself, mm -hmm. right? Do you do you think that that's ever going to change? No, I don't think so. I don't see it in the foreseeable future. I don't think so. Like, companies spend an obnoxious amount of money for ads. And I don't think so. It's in their own interest to have a subscription based um, because as soon as they start charging, if they, even if they have, like, even if they charge the entire thing, I think they're going to lose a lot of subscribers. Yeah. And then they're not going to make as much money as they could with data collection, data collection and um, with. The, the amount of money that companies would pay to be yeah. there, right? So yeah. for them, in terms of bottom line, it's more profitable to be free and charge for ads uh, and have as many people on there as possible than to make it private and, and just have a select people that can actually afford it because... Yeah, no, that's fair. You yeah. don't think that it's going to be something like where everybody's so used to it. If Instagram starts charging you $3 like a month or something like that, everybody's just going to pay the three bucks? No, no, they're not because like, Think about it, right? Like if it's gonna be a subscription-based service, that means you have to have a credit card. And there's about one point, it's a billion people in India and China, India mostly that don't really, that live on, they live cash, right? Like they yeah. don't have a credit cards and debit cards and things like that. 1.8 billion people in India that are probably still using Facebook heavily. I know for a fact that like- no, Facebook is still the main- Yeah, Facebook right? is like the biggest social media Facebook platform is, and um, India is probably, the, India is the uh, highest consumers of social networks, right? Um, so, so you got nothing to do on it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna miss out on that entire yeah. audience group, right? Plus the third world countries and, and, and more underdeveloped countries, right? That are on Facebook and Instagram and things like that. They're gonna get out. So 
it doesn't make sense for them to charge for that service. Yeah. So you said like you mentioned Cambridge Analytica, right? And, yeah. Like a thought just popped up in my mind, and I was just wondering, like, do you think that this whole, like you said, everything is tailored towards you? Yeah. Right. Do you think that that's going to change because it has affected the world in like a negative way, right? And we've been talk we've talked about this on the pod before, right? We've discussed it where people are not getting the information the way they should like the internet hasn't become the utopia that it was supposed to be in fact it's mm-hmm. kind of done the opposite do you think that that's going to change in the next little bit or or is it going to stay the same because like let's be honest man like it's affected all of our lives in one way or another the right? fact no that matter wherever you are in the world third parties that try to convince the entire nation to vote one way versus yeah. the other yeah I mean, I don't think so. I don't see it changing. I think that sort of premise has always been around back in like World War II with propaganda that never, it's the always been there, right? It's always gonna be there. It's always gonna sure. be there. If it's not on Facebook, it's gonna be somewhere else. Yeah. Right? They're always going to find a way, but I don't see it going away, uh, especially not with the social networks that we have to use today. I mean, like, people that showed those, seen those ads, I mean, they showed some behavior that they were going to possibly vote that way anyways. Yeah. Um, so you have to take some sort of action to actually be persuaded. So I don't see it as a like, big deal. Like one thing I noticed, um, YouTube started doing this thing where uh, I noticed I was watching a CBC News uh, YouTube video and they had like a little disclaimer underneath saying uh, CBC is a Canadian broadcast service funded by the government mm-hmm. of Canada. And I noticed like they were starting to like put like Russia, like RT, like Russia Today. Mm-hmm. They started saying, oh, this is like funded by the Russian government. Yeah. And they started putting those disclaimers underneath some of those. Uh, do, you, do you start, do you think that like other social media will start doing that? Like Instagram, they'll be like, oh, this account is funded or created by. So, yeah, I mean, they've already started doing that. Like Facebook now and Instagram now, you can actually see how much dollars certain political parties are spending and what kind of advertisements they're actually deploying on those channels. So they've already started to take that kind of route. Uh, they've actually had some limitations. If you're a political um, party, you, ha- you only have a certain amount of targeting options compared to if you're not. So they have made that, but it's not like a big impact. Right. So it's just just to show face that, hey, we are just doing something. More, just be more transparent. Yeah. Let me see, like, bring something up. Because I mean, like, these guys are under like a lot of pressure, like, there's U.S. politicians that are talking about breaking up the so-called like monopoly of social media, like breaking up Facebook, breaking up Google, breaking up not Apple, but you know like just- yeah. But Apple doesn't collect like Apple's not in, in the business of advertising. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah right? that's what I mean. Like the, it, yeah. w- it won't be Apple, but like Facebook especially is getting targeted heavily. Like I mean, Mark Zuckerberg was up in congressional hearings, getting grilled by like yeah. senators. Yeah. No, it's. Uh... It's a pretty crazy world, right? And so I want to talk about like the business side of it, right? Like you obviously are in the process of collecting all this information and you've already mentioned like that it, it's based off of like our location and everything that we do. Um, in terms of a business, like how many businesses are actually using this kind of information and like how many businesses are not using this like this this huge data hub that we've created and like do you think that the businesses that aren't using this information how far behind are they they're quite behind i mean there's only a few people that aren't using it you're probably looking at your mom and pop shops up and comers um that don't have much media dollars to be spending but other than that your media your medium size especially your large size they're all spending certain amount of money on these platforms and using the data uh, that they can to be able to target. I mean, right. it's, a, it's a self-serve platform. So it's it's, it's almost like a, a little game or machine where you choose that uh, here's my ad. I want to show it to people that are like 15 to 25 year old that like um, these kind of pages that are most likely to shop online that there's a shit ton of different targeting options that you can choose from based on this location. And then the machine automatically does it. You're not really buying in the sense of like, hey, I want to buy a list of people that do this. It's more of a platform lets you choose which 
targeting options you want, and then you just let the platform automatically to show those ads. That's fair. So, so it's like you don't have like deep level of yeah. Like, so like, like you, you you said that like enterprise level corporations are like spending a zillion dollars on this yeah. stuff a year, right? Like Donald Trump, I'm just looking up right now. Donald Trump on, on his campaign spent thirty two million dollars over the last year on just Facebook ads. His Twitter isn't enough clout. <laughs> that's organic, right? That's organic. That's just that's just paid. Yeah. Thirty two million dollars from just one political party. So it's like for a normal person, right? Like that wants to market themselves. How how do they go about doing that? Like apart from just having ass and titties. <laughs> so <laughs> like, let's be real. The great thing about Facebook's advertising platform is that the same targeting option that you have for um, the big corporations that can spend millions are, are available to your mom and pop shops. So my dad runs a runs a pizza store, and so his sort of uh, if you wanted to advertise his restaurant, he has the same level of targeting options compared to if you wanted to go up against Domino's and Papa John's. So the playing field is super super even, and so. Okay. I'll, all you have to do is spend a little bit of money and you can spend as little as you so want like as, as, as a much small as you business want. like how much are you looking to spend per month well it depends on how much how much you have but even and depends on how much you want to be reaching and what your geographical area is but like you can you can make a little bit of splash even if you're looking to spend like a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars a month to start from so it would take like five hundred dollars a month for this podcast to be like massive Hey, you can get you can get you can you can get some significant reach with five hundred dollars. Like, what's what's significant reach? Like, if I was to if I was to invest like five hundred bucks, right, off the top of your head, like if you were to give me a number and say, listen, you spend five hundred dollars today, you'd reach about ten thousand people. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, you'd reach. You'd get ten thousand eyes for sure. That's not enough, though. No, but 500 bucks is not much either. Yeah, 500 bucks is not much for 10,000 people. Like, yeah, but compare that like, to is, is, uh, like, print dad. Compa that, compare that to a billboard. Is right? that like yeah. 500 bucks towards like 10,000 people just looking at your page? Or are they just like, say, let's just narrow it down to Instagram, right? Yeah. Is that $500 just to get like your post show up as one of those fifth or sixth yeah. ads? Yeah. Everybody's scrolling past that shit anyways. How effective is that? So that's where the targeting comes in, right? That's where your creative comes in handy, right? Being able to know what that person likes and doesn't like. Yeah. Because you don't have to have one ad, right? That's the thing with between Facebook versus versus um, TV commercials. You have one commercial for everybody. But you can legitimately have 10 different, 20 different, 30 different ads for 30 different type of people, right? right? So for the guy that does like tits and ass you can have that but for someone that doesn't you can have something else right like if someone's a, a calgary flames fan you can have something like showing calgary flames or or we only or talk about raptors. the raptors on this or whatever podcast. it is right like <laughs> or likes hockey or basketball you can have your image creative tie into that so they're more likely to stop and take a look at that you know what that person likes or doesn't like i guess it's so that, that five dollars like goes a lot more it's relevant ads now with Facebook, right? That's what, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to say, right? Like these data collection is, I mean, although people are all like, oh my God, you have all my data. I mean, rather than seeing a, an ad for something that you don't really care about versus an ad that, you know what, you might actually have value. Yeah. Cause you're gonna get ads nonetheless. Yeah. That's, right, that's, so that's someone comes up to you, right? Like you, you work at a marketing firm. Now you've, you've had experience working as like a third party firm. Mm -hmm. and now you're doing in-house marketing. Yeah. Right. Let's go back to your third party marketing experience, right? Someone comes into you and they have a pizza store. Okay. Right? How how do you as a digital marketer promote their company? Like what what steps do you take? Um, say they give you like a budget, mm -hmm. right? What and then it falls in line with your company's like, all right, th this is how much we need from you. Um what kind of what kind of like what kind of process is it first of all and then how much of like is that guaranteed like how much of the return is guaranteed like the return on your five hundred dollar investment five thousand yeah. dollar investment like let's talk about that for a little bit so it 
you you start off with a strategy, right? So like the, the big questions that I would ask is like, what's your end goal? Like, what's, what's your goal right now? Like if you're, if you just opened your doors up yesterday uh, and no one knows about you, you're trying to build brand, right? Like you're trying to just build some recognition that people know that, Hey, you're here. So you're not really looking for direct sales, but you're just right like, looking for, um, you know, recognition. But if you're a big time chain, yeah. um, like a Domino's, like a pizza hut, you're looking more for sales and traffic and things like that. So yeah. based on what you really want, um, you devise your, your strategy that way. So um, for something like a small mom and pop shop, you just want to be able to take that $500 and reach as many people as you want within your small proximity where you're located um, and just see how many eyes you get on your on your creative. And then you'd have to do a little bit of anecdotal uh, look as, okay, well, am I seeing a lift in traffic or, or calls or interest and things like that or even visit to my website, right? Yeah. But if you're more of a national brand, you probably want to have, uh, you've got a little bit more sophistication that you can do. You'd want to be able to pu push sales. So you're probably going to be driving a lot more traffic to your stores. So like Facebook has an option where you can, where it will show ads to people that are most likely to uh, visit your, your restaurant based on their user behavior. And things like that yeah uh, that still doesn't answer my question right like what's the, what's the process for you like how do you go about doing something like using this information because like we're, we're kind of dumbasses when it comes to like digital marketing mm -hmm. right let's be honest um and i'm like most of the people that have been listening to this which so many fucking people are listening to this shit right now it's crazy not even funny man. are you and, serious guys yeah, i would love no, to see the numbers we, we got crazy views on our last one no way yeah insane um so we're blowing up you know we're doing some marketing of our own but we're using word man, of mouth i um, want to give you some like i want to give you like some tips and tricks so bad yeah no uh, we might don't just hold back listen, listen. <laughs> i don't want it to be unsolicited no, so no, like no, no, listen, listen listen this is basically just an interview all right like we're just making sure that you're good right because i want to know if, I, oh, if, I'm, if I'm hiring you saying. or if i'm hiring somebody else right? i mean let's be honest are you really it's hiring or is it volunteering <laughs> <laughs> hey we, we, <laughs> it's internship <laughs> yeah, um, like that's a, that's a good out, way to put it. You figure out what yeah, you You know what? In fact, you're going to have to pay us if you want to be a part of this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so like, talk to me about your process. Like, You figure out what they want, right? Like, where are they at in their sort of life cycle of business, right? Yeah. Um, so you want to tailor it that way. So what's what's the tailoring? So like like I said, right? If they're, if they're mom and pop shop, you're focusing on mostly reach and, and, and kind of brand building. Yeah. But if you already have a brand, um, then you just kind of want to maintain that, but also provide value, uh, but also you're focused on your bottom line as well. But when you're when you're really starting, like it's mostly just recognition, right? So being as in, in many places as possible. So something like this podcast, like I would not hold back into the areas where you could have people see your podcast, yeah. right? You just want to get it out. To you it. just need to get it out there, right? Look at areas where reach is probably. Um, the most easiest to get organic reach for a business, right? Like to be, to be honest with you, Facebook and Instagram are probably the worst places right now to get organic reach. Cause so what is organic reach? Organic reach is you post something yeah. and a lot of eyes see it by that's it. Right. Putting in a few hashtags and just posting it out there, yeah. getting thousands and thousands of views and blowing up, um, just by not paying a penny. Right. Okay. Back when Facebook was, uh, was, you know, up and coming, right? Like a lot of these, uh, famous Facebook bloggers and whatever you want to call them. Um, Instagram just, thotties? Yeah. Just post this stuff out and because Facebook at that time, there was so many users but only a few content creators, your reach was 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 crazy, right? Yeah. But now it's so mature, Instagram's so mature, YouTube is so mature that you just can't get famous like just like that. You're not going to get the same amount of reach. But like places like LinkedIn right now. So if my little 12 year old brother started making YouTube videos, he'd be a bum. Yeah, I mean, it need to be really Yo, great. why'd you just call my brother a bum? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't, I mean like, look at that guy that's like, what's like six year old make, uh, making like millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah that, that um, toy kid. Toy kid? Yeah. He was probably one of the first person to actually review toys and stuff like that. Yeah. So he was first to, to market with that. But now if, if I tell my niece to review some toys, I mean, she's gonna be on the bottom of the, of the feet. Yeah, there's a there's a big thing nowadays with YouTube where there's like a lot of the people that started off on YouTube like 10, 12 years ago. That just are, rain shout out. 
yeah, yeah. They, they, they've left. They've left yeah. YouTube completely because they don't make any money off of it. Exactly, because they're not getting the same level of reach as before. Yeah, do yeah. people on YouTube like actually make money or is make it just- Tons of money. No, but is it just like, it's like, I remember back in the day, like YouTubers, like you got a certain amount of views, you'd have like a certain guaranteed paycheck. So it's not really right. views that gets you paid. Yeah, it's, it's, but like, that's how it used to be, right? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I'm and not, so like, how is it, how does it work now? It's, so if you, if you have, if you have a video and there are some, um, there's, there's gonna be ads in those videos. Yeah. If you post a, a podcast, say, and it's like four ads and I watch through all four of those ads, um, sure, I, I can skip the ad, no problem. But if I watch through them and even skip them, you'll get paid for, for those ads, for, um, uh, just because of that. So you'll get like less than a cent? Yeah, I don't know what the exact yeah. kind of dollar amount is, but you'll get paid for that. But if, uh, say, you posted a video and I saw an ad right away um, and I just left, then I'm not, you're not going to get paid. So you have your content needs to be at least good enough that it'll make the person watch through the ad uh, for you to get paid. Yeah, nobody watches through ads. Well, you can skip it too, right? Yeah, as long as like, even but you don't need the video. As long as you stay onto the video, yeah. you get paid. You, right? as, as in you don't exit out of the video. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Because, yeah. No, that's, okay, so. Because those advertisers are paying Google, yeah. Google will give you a small cut and it'll get take the rest. All right, so like, let's go back to like the mom and pop shop, right? Yeah. Like they come back in, right? You said that you you figured out what their business plan is or whatever, what their goal yeah. is, right? Now, how are you as a digital marketer, right? doing something for them like are you putting it on like how are you purchasing these ads like what's the process of purchasing ads or yeah. like creating these ads and like how much creativity goes behind this process so success within marketing and it's pretty much all digital now i think 75 percent of companies media spends is all towards digital um the variables to success is two things it's creative and what you target so everything happens within Facebook and Google's own platform. And so they have a platform where you upload your ad, you choose how much money you want to You gotta invest. design your ad and shit first? Yeah, you, you design your ads first. I mean, Facebook's okay. making it easy where you just put in a couple images and they'll make your ads for you. But if you really want full control, you design your own ads first and, and upload them. And like, them. do most like marketing firms do that for you? Or like, does someone coming in have to like pay someone? Or like, or what's the expectation for the person coming in? Like, I don't know how to make a poster. Right. Right. Like I, I could barely put up like a nice Instagram. Well, photo. use Adobe Photoshop or whatever graphic design tool you want to use. Right. Yeah. Um, and create that, put an image, put some text in there, shit like that. And, um, choose who, who wants to see it, choose how much money you want to put behind it. Yeah. And then the rest, and you just upload that. And then the rest is Facebook kind of will deliver it. And you get to see the results, right? You get to see how many people saw, you get to see how many people bought based off of just clicking on your ad. Um, you can see what ad performed the best and you can yeah. turn one off and, and put more money behind the one that's performing the best all in kind of like real time. Things that you never had before with a billboard yeah. or a radio ad, right? You just post it up and see six months later down the line, was it good or did you lose a whole bunch of money? So it's all on the fly. Really. How many people have actually lost the money? I mean, not all campaigns are going to be um, successful. successful, right? You're not always going to get the direct ROI off of it but you can't always attribute to someone that you saw an ad if you went to the store and bought something. Yeah. That attribution is still kind of, people are still trying to figure it out. Yeah. You think there will be like a link up between like, oh, I saw an ad and then my location settings told me that, or told the advertiser that he went to the store right after and he bought that. There is, and, and there's some, still some of, some of that out there right now, but it's not like companies aren't super confident with the way uh, the technologies works right now. So they're not really completely relying millions of dollars of spend uh, based off of that data. But like Google, I talked to Google, uh, when I went to help one of the conferences and they kind of told me how it worked. And it was like pretty interesting. Like if you're a store, it's about 99% accuracy. Uh, and if you went to a store that's in a mall, and let's say it was the second floor and you're on the first floor, yeah. like geographic in the 2D map, you're in the same location, but it'll actually take Wi-Fi network and signals and the strength of Wi-Fi network signals to actually tell you whether or not you're in the first floor or the second floor yeah. of that building. Right? That's fucked up. So that's bro. crazy. So don't, get, don't connect to like. Well, not even if you're connected or not, but like, like just, a signal on your phone. Yeah, the Wi-Fi is as long as your Wi-Fi is. Yeah, like, as long as the connection is. I mean, as long as the strength signal. Like is even still your there. LTE connection or 5G connection yeah. or whatever, it's like it's all the same. Yeah. So with like 5G, do you think that this thing is gonna get even 
more precise. Yeah, yeah. the data is going to be more precise. And it might be the, the link between that offline and online activity. Fine. Some crazy <laughs> shit. Some crazy shit. Like they know a lot of stuff about you. I don't know if you guys ever looked at your own kind of Google account, but all the different categories that they have of you, yeah. like what kind of cars you're interested in, what kind of um, destinations you're interested in, what your age is and all that kind of shit. Like you can actually take a look at that. That's you pretty interesting to was, look. Uh, I think it was like last month or two months ago where like I discovered like the location services in Apple. Yeah. Like, you can look up like what locations you've been to and yeah. all that stuff. And I was like, I was showing these guys. I was like, oh, this is crazy. Yeah. Like, it shows you like how many times you've been to this place and everything. And I was yeah. like, holy shit. And dude. Google will actually send you like an email like every year of like where your trips have been and, and how long you've spent on a certain area or a different store and shit like that. So they know all this stuff about you just so that way like, they can, so that for, they can get advertisers money like right now like facebook and google are kind of competing head to head so like i work in-house and in client and pretty much both those two companies are are fighting for our media dollars so right? what's the difference between work like obviously third party like marketing a clients coming to you what's your experience like like working in-house now like what's the difference in terms of like their approach to marketing like obviously they're tar- like they're just using their own product right mm-hmm. and they're marketing their own product but at the same time like these guys are tar- like using different vendors and stuff right like you- you're working for a company that's selling products from every vendor possible yeah right like everything from automotive parts to sporting goods yeah right versus before like how how what's the difference and like the in the way that you guys approach marketing in general so again it's it, the, the fundamentals haven't really changed it's both building brand but also um generating enough sales but the way we do it in-house is i mean we have a lot more i mean as a bigger company we have a lot more access to our own customer data and we're using that as ways to segment so um we know i mean we can tell based on customer data that some segments like to buy certain different categories of products so based on if you like automotive parts you'll get a little more automotive parts related advertising shit like that if you're more into sporting goods we'll show you more sporting good ads and sporting good emails and stuff like that so being in-house you have um a lot more access to um your own company data so you're saying like those point cards and shit like the point cards right those are i'm assuming that that's what you guys are focusing on more that's right so now if someone if a company creates a a points program right like a rewards program your starbucks your every company that you can think of right they all have their own credit cards their own they all have their own like get a free coffee after seven coffees or whatever Mm -hmm. right um is that is that kind of taking away from from like the digital marketing firms at all or not no. or is that information just being sold off as well no that information is not being sold off so like you'll see that almost every other company is starting to bring up their own loyalty programs right yeah first to start off with shoppers and their optimum card yeah right um you got Canadian um to morton's with their with their own card you got canadian tire with a triangle card that's used across like sports check and uh and all that kind of shit so it's a data collection tool rather than more of like a loyalty building and, and shit like that and all that kind of so the, it's just bullshit when they say like we care about our customer it's mostly just to be able to get get understand their consumer more sure. so that way that their advertising is more related to what they like and what they don't like rather than okay. being shown them anything and everything that's essentially what it is it's and that's what digital marketing opens the door to is being able to show consumers ads that would actually matter to them okay so what's the dark side of this i mean behind the scenes stuff that i don't even get to see right like if if, uh people that may sit in a room and listen to your conversations and shit like that like is that an actual thing do people actually sit down in the room and listen to your conversation or is it all i don't really know there's a thing that came out today about the cia yeah um this was this happened in the 80s i'm sure it still happens now but they were talking about how in the 80s uh, the cia bought uh, an encryption company and then that encryption company was um, selling like encryption like stuff to people and then the CIA would go and listen to those people. Mm. So they were just using it as like, okay, if these guys are going to use encryption, they're going to hide something. Right. So we want to know what they're hiding. Mm. And they were actually sitting in a room listening to all this stuff. 
this messed Fuck. up. And that yeah. was happening in the 80s, so I'm, it's sure, all the, I'm sure it's still happening now. Behind the doors, closed doors kind of stuff that even I don't even know. Yeah, like that's but going into like, like the, prism the, and stuff. The like that. dark side really is like, what happens if this information goes in the wrong hands, right? Or is it in the wrong hands already? Well, is it? <laughs> Not that I know of, but... Cambridge Analytica. Cambridge Analytica. Yeah, so that was messed up, man. Like, that Facebook allowed uh, Cambridge Analytica as some extra privileges that it wouldn't give to other consu- uh, other advertisers that allowed them to even get even more um, data on your friends. And no, I was, I was reading an article about this guy. And uh, essentially what he did is he took 200 or 300 phones, right? Turned all of them on and put them in a little cart you know those like carts that you see in like advertisements where like you're dragging your kid in like a little red cart and it's got like the fucking handle like lever right it's just it's literally just like a like a rectangular box your child sits in it and and you're dragging them around right um essentially what this guy did is this guy filled up all of these uh the filled up this cart with 100 200 phones and he tricked Google into thinking that um, that there was traffic on this road, right? So, do you think that this all this kind of trend will continue? Like once once it, it kind of became viral, like it, if it showed up on my feed, like I, it was just a CNET article, mm-hmm. but it's like I'm sure it showed up on like a million other people's thing. And just like anything else in life, like once people get see an idea, they try to copy the idea. Right? Do you think that like people could do that more and more to create problems where there aren't any? Just I think I think people have better things to do with the time. I mean, this this guy walked around and just just to trick Google. Sure, there was a, there was another to clout, really, so and like to get there was another thing right um, about like these kids and they're trying to beat Instagram's algorithm. Yeah. By uh, and what they're doing is they're they're us- they're taking one account, right, and they're accessing it on like multiple phones. Mm-hmm right to so now one person is active Mm -hmm. in eight different ten different locations Mm -hmm. at one time Mm -hmm. do you not think that that's like a dark side of this no because i think at the same time while people are trying to trick the algorithm there's also those engineers at their company trying to make it even better so i mean eventually if they haven't already fixed it the fact that your account is logged into eight, ten different devices. Is how a red difficult flag. is it to beat? Uh, how difficult is it to beat like Instagram's algorithm? What do you mean like? Or like, like I don't want I don't want certain advertisements. If you really really don't want certain different advertisements, you click on the three different dots in the top right corner and say I don't want to see this ad, and they won't show it to you. Instagram's kind of self interest is for you to spend as much time as possible on that platform. So if you don't like seeing an ad like it actually like, wants I want, you to I want to see some different shit on my feed you know what i'm saying i mean what i do sometimes is i just kind of search up a whole bunch of stuff that i want to see ads to and then i'll automatically just get it that's but weird man you kind of want it to happen so like, like there's no way like my feed like my explore page will just look different like all i see right now is just, like raptors shit yeah. raptors basketball <laughs> once in a while like what, you know, who's like, your favorite it, basketball team Nah, I get I get all of that, but like you know, you, you want, want to see more like variety. you want variety. Like, how do you get that? That's a very interesting question because will it will it, does 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 Instagram want to give you more variety? Or does it want to give you more? Uh, Isn't that what everybody wants? Is like more variety and like if the discoverability. If your your piece, job yeah. is to make it so that like you're reaching people that are not just interested in the product, but that might be interested in the product. Yeah. And that, like, even the people that are not interested in the product or haven't thought about it, mm-hmm. right? They're, they're the ones looking at it as well. I want that experience where I see something that I haven't seen, or like I learned something that I haven't mm-hmm. seen. Mm-hmm. How do I get to that point? I think that's kind of where probably these platforms are working towards um, to show you things that. So it's not there yet. It's not there yet. Probably not there yet. Yeah. Probably working on it. All right. That's going to take some deep, deep learning to fix, kind of really fully predict what you'd want. Yeah, you think an AI will replace you soon? I mean, it's going to replace um, like the nitty gritty kind of optimization if it hasn't already quite a bit. But that strategic level piece is always going to kind of be there of, of the planning out and, and figuring out how much dollars to spend where and how to spend it and who to target and, and that kind of stuff. You're never going to get an AI to really fully take over that okay 
yeah no that was a well that like i learned something <laughs> <laughs> right um you got more questions or more well my question was not related to social media at all all right what's your question well because you know shark's a very multi-talented guy and he likes many different things one of those being apple okay <laughs> Big Apple fan. Um, shout out to Apple. <laughs> I don't think they need shout outs anymore. Right? Hey, we're the only ones that give shout outs on this podcast, all right? You're yeah. ruining your chances of getting hired. So I was watching a video uh, yesterday and um, there's this guy talking about how like, he's like, you know, the future of smartphones. And he was talking about how like, you know, smartphone features nowadays, like you don't really need them anymore. Like there's a lot of stuff that's coming out now that's like, do I even really need this? Like, for example, 100 times zoom in. So I'm saying mm-hmm. that's 20? Yeah, that's like 20, That shit just like, came out today, like right? Like 5G and all that stuff. Like, so my question for you was like, where do you see the future of smartphones? Is it, is, is it like folding phones? Is it like... They came out with the folding phone today as well. Yeah, I mean, like, it, it, folding phones have been coming out for last year. Um, that Motorola Razr looking fucking hype, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty... pretty that, it's no, it's I mean, new, like, but like, like, I don't know if I want the, that the, though. The, the other ones. Like the fold in, like the yeah, no, that's, oh, that's, the, or the Windows Duo. Yeah, the Windows. That one Duo. looks actually pretty sick. Or like, for why. example, do you see like like Apple's trying to do the whole like wireless? So, I think I think cars are the same sort of point where cars are, where it's like your every iteration isn't like huge changes, right? It's still a, a metal thing with wheels on the bottom. So, I think I think it really has reached its peak sort of form yeah. unless someone like an elon musk for smartphones comes out and really changes the game but even elon musk just brought a little bit of i mean not a little bit i'm not undermine what he's brought into the car market but I mean, still yeah, wheels like the form factor like, is still there right? automation was like really he's like the one at the forefront of like yeah. vehicle automation mm-hmm. right where it's like you just have that autopilot feature yeah it's like tesla was the first company that did it big like it not just did it big brought it out to the market so, so that breakthrough comes from software and i think software is really where these phones are going to push it to the next level rather than form factor and folding phones and 100 megapixel cameras and shit like that like you don't see for example like like wireless you don't see like that being no wireless i can see that charging. i can see, i can see that i think you can go full wireless no ports no nothing and, yeah. and you walk into a room and it charges and Charging your phone doesn't even be a thing anymore. Like, you walk into your house and it just charges as soon as you walk in and shit like that. Like, I think it can get there eventually. Yeah. Not right now, but I still think we're like four or five years away from that. I don't think it's like ten. Was like twenty twenty two. I know. I don't think it's like ten years away. I think it's like yeah. I think it's sooner rather than we think. I think it's like by twenty twenty five. Like, we have all that shit like readily available. I mean, realistically, we're like one port away now. It's just charging. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah, so. no. Do we got internet terms for this? Oh, shit. We do, Shark. I've been watching this podcast since like day one. I can't <laughs> wait for internet terms. I know, Shark's an avid listener. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the first one is kind of inspired by uh, the recent uh, outbreak of uh, Corona. Shout out coronavirus. No, no, no. <laughs> no shout out that. No, don't shout out. <laughs> nah, yo, you gotta raise awareness. Shout you know? out to the doctors. I'm pretty sure everyone's aware of it right now. So, uh, the first one is uh, Cyber Crondiac. Dog, you're a Cyber Crondiac. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Continue. Char- cyber Crondiac. Cyber con- con- Condriac, yeah. Someone that's just like. Something has to do with. It has to do with cyber. It, 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 it has, has to cyber. do with the internet. Like Chondriac well, is someone who's like obs- is obsessed with so something. So you're, just, you're pretty close. Yeah. Like a guy that just doesn't get off doing technology. Someone who's just on the internet uh, all the time, or yeah, like like the sickness sort of way. Yeah. So it's like it's like you're like it's an addiction. Yeah. In an unhealthy Addicted way. Addicted to technology. Um. Close. You're close, but I'll just say it. So, a person who compulsively searches the internet for information about particular real or imagined symptoms of illness. Oh. Off. Everybody is terribly everybody. health conscious these days. It's not a surprise. Yo, WebMD. WebMD. WebMD, bro. Shout out WebMD. Yo, I've had cancer five times already. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever searched that up? Like, oh, 100%. Yeah, everybody's searched up WebMD, stupid. bro. Who thinks WebMD is going to replace doctors? <laughs> <laughs> like, just 
I have these symptoms. Yada yada. I mean, like, it Yo, can't, buddy, right? Like, like, fuck. Fine, that's one thing, right? Like, searching up your symptoms and shit. But, like, there, it's a whole nother dark hole when people start going down and, like, looking for cures on, like, YouTube and stuff. <laughs> oh, anti even ways like, to fix yourself. Dude, yeah. Honestly, you can actually replace it, like, your general practitioner no but like to the, a point. but that that is get, that is actually happening because you, your right? phones have your health data on it it's, eventually it's your that. watch it's will get your blood that. pressure there's like um yeah. there's you like, put that in and hear my symptoms and it'll be like you've got a flu no nah, right, there, cool. there's <laughs> there's companies already out there that actually have doctors online yeah yeah right yeah. like you uh can, shout yeah. out roman yeah, you can actually sponsor like, the podcast literally just like like skype kind of with a doctor anytime yeah this is why we never became doctors because that job is going to be absolutely no nah, but see that's not it that's that's not true it's like those guys are actual doctors licensed and stuff and essentially instead of having like a face-to-face like you go in and you speak to a doctor you actually just you set up an appointment like a skype appointment and that yeah, person but you is, a computer do all that you know it's like an ai just kind of do that eventually, eventually. but like if we're, we're gonna need a lot more like biometric data i mean we're almost there i mean what, what like when you go to a doctor what do they look at heart rate and blood pressure and yeah, your your uh what is it called your medical your history thermometer whatever it is yeah, yeah. Thermometer. Your thermometer. fever and shit <laughs> and that's like, like kind of the hey did go-to. you bring your thermometer into work to the, into the office today checks your temperature yeah temperature yeah right like, that's your basic <laughs> yeah, that's vital signs and now we have access to that all the time you get a computer you pull that information and it'll almost like a 99 percent confidence give you your uh your diagnosis all right, what's our next one? Next okay. one is uh, ego surf. Ego mm-hmm. surfing? So basically, you're just looking for shit to make yourself feel better. Kind of. Before. Yeah, I'm like I'm like two for two right now. Okay, this like, is a new record. You're like half and half. Nah, this is two for two. You're surfing the web to stroke your own ego? Uh, I get it. Again, you're close. You're close. Okay, so. so basically what you're doing is like, it's like internet trolling, right? Or like, you know, you're looking at people and you're talking shit about them like you find someone some loser who posted another sa- like no, the same picture no. over again all right i'm just going off on a rant but you know all those people that just post the same picture over and over and over again every day it's the same shit don't do that you know who you are <laughs> uh so this one is to search the internet for instances of one's own name or links to one own website Show sure, my name is all over the I'm internet. Sure, Just googling yourself. I'm sure. Yeah, your name is very popular. That's why it's so hard to find me on the internet because it's all like Shark Khan actor. Yeah, for you it's probably terrible. You probably like try to search for your own name. It's like <laughs> you spell your name differently though. On Facebook, because I'm not allowed to use the actual full name. Jeez, which is crazy. Yeah, I put it in. I sign up and like, ooh, looks like you're trying to impersonate a celebrity. I'm like, nah, that's just my name. That's me though. <laughs> Damn. Have you ever searched up show? My own name? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everyone's Google themselves like once. Like, like, what, like what comes up? Just my like mm. LinkedIn profile. Yeah, yeah, like LinkedIn. all the just social media. It used handles. to be Facebook. They used to, show used to be. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think I've told the story to you guys before, but uh, if you search out my name, and I think you'd have to go to like a couple pages down. But like, there was a there was a thing I sent. TSN used to have like a mailbag, hmm. and uh, there was a thing I sent right after. It was like the off season after the Flames lost in the Stanley Cup. So this is like Dude, it's actually just you. It's, hell it's your LinkedIn, it's your stream, it's your well, SoundCloud, it's... and your Instagram. Hey, you got a SoundCloud? Yeah, when is that mixtape dropping? I'm a big on the SoundCloud rapper game. But anyways, like <laughs> I sent a I sent a mailbag question in, and it was basically like me just attacking the guy who made the mailbag because he put like the flames like sixth and like Tampa Bay fifth or something. Yeah. And I was pissed. I was like, why are we not top five in the rankings? In your power rankings. It's still there. And it's still there. You can probably still find it's it. Little, I don't know. Mini like, bossy. <laughs> <laughs> little kid bossy just pissed off. Like, yo, what, what, what the fuck is wrong with you? Nah, they removed it. Uh, see, it, it was probably really you lost. Yeah, it was a, lot, a long time ago. Yeah. Have you heard of this app called Byte? Like yeah. the Vine creator? Yeah. The only reason I downloaded it and signed up for it just so I can have my name. Oh, as my like, username just like first like i caught so, this so you never know it's gonna get big so you're saying somewhere in india Shah Rukh Khan is trying to sign up for bite and he's exactly. like fuck this canadian guy yeah exactly it's like, he's gonna pay you i missed out on tiktok yeah so honestly if you're working for us we're taking ownership of your life and so if Shah Rukh Khan's writing you a check to use that uh, bite handle <laughs> you're cutting us a portion of that check yeah like that domain the domain game is like a lot of money to be made there yeah. The mains are like, well, like valuable. Like, how how valuable is a website now? 
Like a domain? Yeah. Like one client paid for a domain like seventy five thousand dollars. What the fuck? For a domain. Seriously? And they don't even really not even so they can use it just so that anybody who types there it redirects to their actual website. Jeez. Seventy five thousand. And it wasn't even that big of a it's not like that huge company. Man, back in the day I should have just taken Microsoft. It's like Microsoft.com. <laughs> Whenever you see an up and coming like website, just grab the domain, it's like twenty bucks. Fucking go and get on bite right That's that's a business idea. Yeah. <laughs> like dealers and brokers and for this all this stuff. Yeah. Like you actually talk to like a domain broker that will actually, you know, if you want to buy someone's domain and shit. Fuck. Uh. Yeah, that's crazy. That's the last one. It's not what you think it is. So don't like don't go by your first thought, but rasturbator. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not gonna say it, so I I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm gonna go two for three today. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, I just yeah, I'm honestly for a, for one. a guy who's supposed to be an internet expert here, you know. This one's kind of related to you, Shark. Not in much that way, but like, you know, rasturbator. A rasturbator. Nah, I, I'm drawing a blank on this one. <laughs> so it's a it's a designer who's become a compulsive digital manipulator or Photoshop abuser. As in one who is constantly tweaking a design over and over again. Uh, like a perfectionist. Like a perfectionist. I was a perfectionist like, or uh, someone who's like, like changing the way they look. Like, like IG model, you know, you, you don't oh. look that way in real life, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, it's themselves. Yeah. Well, it could be. Kim like Kardashian. Just someone who, yeah, manipulates, you know. Yeah, no, I, the, yo, so many people do that. That's, that like, that's like culture now. Does that yeah. include filters and shit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I everybody's done that. Snapchat did filters. Did so like, right? I'm a, I'm a rasturbator. You you rasturbate? I I rasturbate. Daily? <laughs> yeah, I'm not that active on social media no more. It's just liking and retweeting, you know. <laughs> Once in a while, I have a thought to share, but uh, um, on Twitter, you have a lot of thoughts to share. Like you're on it quite a bit. No, nah, but it's, it's like it's liking really well, and retweeting. Like raptors, yeah. Like, yeah. Just gets pissed off about the raptors. And- yeah, I'm gonna just shout out the Raptors, bro. 15 game win streak, you know Damn. how it'd be, you know? That's the long as they've best in Canadian sport, like pro sport history. Yeah, I'm like, yo, we're going back to back. I'm, I'm gonna call it right now. Damn, y'all can come at on me. The pot, eh? Yeah, y'all this can is... come back at, at me, you know? Uh, I don't think anybody's gonna come at you. Nah, yo, we got, we got listeners, we got clout. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that's, that's good, right? Um, Thank you, Shark, for coming no, on. Thanks for having me. Explaining a few things. Um, so now you know why you get that uh, bidet. bidet. Yeah, bidet. <laughs> That's the only reason we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> <spot. laughs> yeah. No, nah, it was fun. Um, Did you buy a bidet? Not Did you yet. buy it? Not yet, but soon. Just we'll wasted around. Instagram got me. He said soon. But... Instagram oh, got soon? me. <laughs> um, yeah, bro, the problem is, like, the water's just too cold. <laughs> Like that's just that's just a fact. This it's like you don't have for like a warm <laughs> No, you don't you don't got a hot water tank Dude, like uh water attached makes a big to difference. He likes it No, you you don't, don't got a hot water tank attached to your toilet. That's just that's just like how plumbing works in a household, so it's just like, you know, it's gotta be it's gotta be at least room temperature. <laughs> for him to feel good about his house, you know. Yeah. Hey yo. Hey yo. Hey. Right, I can, I can... All right. On that thought. <laughs> yeah. On that thought. Thank you again for listening. Um, our next episode, we got another, we got another guest coming on. This one's gonna be pretty dope as well. But thank you again for Sharoh, uh, or to Sharoh for coming on, and um, doing this. We really appreciate it. Um, and uh, until next time, thanks for listening. Oh, also before we head out, you know, shout out our Instagram page at the one mic podcast hit us with a follow uh the link is in the bio to listen to this pod so if you know somebody that's not listening tell them to listen to it i'm gonna do my own marketing here all right yeah review rate subscribe share it on your story share it, share it on your mom's story tell your grandma to listen to it and um all right thanks for listening Easy.